There have been many videos and articles produced regarding what cultural Marxism is and what it is not. The modern term originally can be traced to American ultra-conservatives of the early 1990s, such as William S. Lynn and Pat Buchanan, who talked about it in the context of political correctness, although certainly a similar themed word appeared in the 1920s Germany called cultural Bolshevism, which was a reaction to the cultural shifts of the contemporary Bolshevism at the time. But what is really cultural Marxism and what does it mean? If you go to wikipedia.com, you will find that it's an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory due to the fact that the Frankfurt School, that I will explore in a bit, was predominantly Jewish. So right off the bat, this doesn't look too well for the reputation of the word cultural Marxism, which is probably why thinkers like Jordan Peterson use the word postmodern neo-Marxism instead, to essentially describe the same thing. But before I will explain exactly what it means, I'd like you first to be familiarized with the existing criticism of the phrase cultural Marxism. And you would be surprised, but the criticism come from different political camps. The most dishonest types just dismiss it outright as an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory or saying that it is used by people who hate stuff such as women's rights or something without actually understanding what the term tries to infer. And the prominent example of such a dishonesty is that of H. Bomber guy who had not picked a series of idiots talking about cultural Marxism who themselves know little of it nor have read the literature of people who are classified as cultural Marxists, but still he made a shit ton of likes knowingly deceiving an audience that wanted to believe that cultural Marxism is basically BS and doesn't exist. The other example includes a number of intellectual people on different sides who criticize the Marxist part of cultural Marxism and the criticism goes like this. Not many people of the lefty intelligentsia circles have embraced economical Marxism. The prominent critique of that approach had even included Keith Woods, who argued that those people really are cultural capitalists, as they are operating within the capitalist economy and don't wish to replace it. And I happen to agree with this critique. Another critique that lands closely with cultural Marxism comes when the cultural is equated with postmodernism, and postmodernism is a rejection of grand meta narratives such as Marxism is making it sound contradictory. Finally, nobody calls themselves cultural Marxists anyways, besides some edgy LARPers trying to piss off the conservatives. Now, before I address all of those critiques, I will have to explain what cultural Marxism really is, and why it has the word Marxism attached to it, even though that doesn't make any sense in the contemporary reality. But before that, I will answer the last criticism made against the usage of the word cultural Marxism, because apparently nobody is calling themselves that. Which is true, but here's the thing. There's been zero capitalist intellectuals before the 20th century. However, there were intellectuals who have defended the ideas that capitalism is supposed to represent, at least according to Ludwig von Mises and Karl Marx. However, those people did not label themselves capitalists. In fact, the word itself comes from an English translation of Marx das Kapital, who originally didn't even use it. Which is to say that Karl Marx has argued against a label he didn't even invent, but this label, as many people would argue, accurately represented the current economical system which Karl Marx has lived under. Similarly, there has been zero intellectuals who call themselves neoliberals, and the word itself was coined by leftist reactionaries upset at the economical reforms undertaken by the Western nations as a result of popularity of the Chicago School of Economics, none of whom refer to themselves as neoliberals, instead calling themselves libertarians or some other terms. However, as our popular perception is shaped by lefty centrism, a word that I will soon coin, we call those people neoliberal and because it to an extent explains the economic realities that were created by people like Milton Friedman, Margaret Thatcher and others. Do you see where I'm getting at? My argument is that cultural Marxism is a good explanation of a certain phenomenon of reality that I will spend the rest of the video explaining. 
cultural Marxism or neo-Marxist postmodernism was given birth in the middle of 20th century, primarily in the Frankfurt School and by people like Antonio Gramsci, who had coined the phrase the long march through institutions by which leftists will overtake the society by the means of institutions, which has practically happened, so congratulations. However, Antonio Gramsci remained a communist when he died, unlike others who grew to embrace postmodernism and are the reason why they are also called neo-Marxist postmodernists. And precisely that is due to the marriage of the Marxist conflict theory and postmodernist philosophy. At the early stage of the Frankfurt School, people making up the Frankfurt School were all Marxists. However, with Soviet brutality and Marxism not being supported by the proletarian class, their interests had started to fade away and they had to find another way to destabilize the West, or if you don't like this word, consider the word reshaping the West. And already by 1950s and 1960s, they had started to lay down the fundament for movement that are now described as neo-Marxist postmodernist or cultural Marxist. The most prominent philosopher that can be described as a cultural Marxist is Herbert Marcuse, who in his 1965 essay had laid out his arguments against free speech and for the oppression of the supposed oppressors, arguing that for a truly tolerant society, one should oppress the strong and favor the weak. Because indiscriminate tolerance or a truly free speech oppresses the voices of the less powerful, in his opinion, where the less powerful are people who are on the left and are racial minorities or any other types of minorities and his solution was oppression of conservatives in order to reverse power relations and lift up the marginalized. Sounds familiar? Well, it was written back in the civil rights era. Another important philosopher in the foundations of cultural Marxism was Theodore Adorno, who had pathologized a healthy behavior such as pride in one's country, family, gender roles and parenthood in his book The Authoritarian Personality. In other words, he essentially laid out the early attacks on a healthy community in order to subvert it. Many contemporary cultural Marxists still use his words in order to wage attacks on people on the cultural right. Another pathologization of common sense is made by Paul Fearband, who had done whatever he can in order to undermine public's confidence in science, going as far as to say that if you dislike astrology, you're a racist. Similarly goes Jack Derrida, this time undermining the confidence in language and understanding of ancient philosophers using deconstruction, which grew to be applied in other spheres of discussion. And listing all the instances in which those individuals have undermined the West is going to take a while, especially if you look at race critical theory, feminism, queer theory, that went as far as to petition to legalize pedophilia. Instead, I'd like to say precisely this. Cultural Marxists are using the instruments of Marxism, particularly the conflict theory that's supposed to be applied to proletariat and the bourgeoisie, but they have expanded to other spheres of life, such as gender, race, disability, where one group is the oppressor and the other group is the oppressed. In other words, to establish an egalitarian society, one group has to be destroyed and whether you read Audre Lorde, Herbert Marcuse or any other labeled cultural Marxists, they all have the same end goals in mind. That is to weaken and then destroy the West and people who they call as privileged or the oppressors. Even if they are not saying it directly and openly that they wish to destroy the West or white shift the people who make up the West, their actions do. And similarly, you can say the same thing about Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, who did not at all wanted to increase income inequalities or have more poor people on the streets, but their policies have helped to facilitate such a result. And if you are a moral consequentialist as I am, you should have no problems comprehending that. Intersectionality, feminism, social justice, black studies, queer theory, conflict theory, critical theory, critical race theory, all those branches had all been inspired by the works of the Frankfurt School and postmodernist philosophers. 
without whom and the long march through institutions, scum like Judith Butler, who believes that sex, yes you heard that right, sex and not gender is socially constructed, would simply not exist in academia. Judith Butler and other contemporary cultural Marxists may not be economic Marxists, because it's just unpractical, but they had borrowed heavily from Marxist class struggle and conflict theory. This oppressor versus oppressed mentality is being applied to group identities they label as intersectionality and effectively used as an instrument for an effort to bring down the perceived oppressor of those things that are intersectional. Their usage of postmodernism is done in order to weaken the power and the confidence of people in Western culture, science and community in order to facilitate crisis after which they will take over and destroy the strong. Nothing more but a practicality and convenience, not for the love of postmodernism. If there was other philosophy saying that for example race is a social construct, they would practically adopt it. They would adopt anything that will facilitate conflict between groups of people that they define in opposition against. For example, people of color are defined in opposition to white people, men are defined in opposition to women, and there is no moral equivalence between the two, whether whites and people of color, or men and women, or any other idea from the intersectional construct, as one is the oppressor and the other one is the oppressed. In fact, according to Bell Hooks, a contemporary successor to Audre Lorde, we're literally living under a white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. When, for instance, the big bearded man with male genitalia wins the women's weightlifting competition, you can predict with 100% accuracy who is going to say, yeah, what's the problem with that? And the people who are going to say, hmm, I'm not sure Clive the big weightlifter should be winning the women's category. You can predict it. And the people who say, why have you got a problem with that bigot, are always the same people who believed in the past that our societies needed to be pulled apart in another fashion. And now they'd like to do it in this fashion. Stephen Gould, Ibrahim X. Candy, and ContraPoints may have never read Herbert Marcuso, but their deeds and actions certainly helped to create a world that he had envisioned, minus the economic Marxism part. The deep-rooted culture of critique towards the West is the foundational element underpinning cultural Marxism, or postmodernist neo-Marxism, whatever you wish to call it. And it is not just a critique of the West, it is also a call for power for the intersectional groups that ultimately will assert dominance over ourselves even at the expense of our civil liberties, and I quote now from Herbert Marcuso, their continued existence is more important than the preservation of abused rights and liberties, which grant constitutional powers to those who oppress these minorities. It should be evident by now that the exercise of civil rights by those who don't have them presupposes the withdrawal of civil rights from those who prevent their exercise, and the liberation of the damned of the earth presupposes suppression not only of their old, but also of their new masters. Even though it was written in 1965, a process that is referred to as cultural Marxism is undergoing right now, and there are many ways in which it is done, whether by censorship, whether by popularizing the culture of political correctness, whether by putting different groups of people against each other, whether by intersectionality, whether by legislation, whether by educational system or popular culture, it is all used as instruments in order to weaken and subsequently oppress people who are considered privileged in the expense of transgenders, people of color, gays, people who are mentally disabled, and women, to a point where men now can't have an opinion with regards to abortion, because abortion is seen as a source of power that women can exercise that should not be challenged. Hence, this is why the opposite ends of the intersectionality spectrum are encouraged to be assertive powerful and oppressive towards people at the other hand of intersectionality spectrum, and that is to reverse power relations, except many would argue that they are already reversed. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what I call cultural Marxism. And in defense of the word, I shall say that 
cultural Marxism perfectly explains the current reality of things and is a good word explaining the political beliefs of some people. A similar themed word is bioleninism, which is a bit different, less popular, but captures a similar reality. And as people use neoliberalism to describe the current state of economic affairs and use it to label people who in their minds are neoliberal, I feel no different regarding the usage of the word cultural Marxism. Now, with regards to addressing the rest of criticism, perhaps it can be named differently due to a stigma that is associated with it, as cultural leftism, as I call it, or postmodernist neo-Marxism, as Jordan Peterson calls it, doesn't have the stigma associated with it as does cultural Marxism. But regardless, whatever word we will choose to address this reality is fine, but to deny that it exists is a deep mistake and dishonest action, and I believe that my video did a good job at explaining the reality that the word cultural Marxism stands for.